California Grill has completely changed. Again. But has it changed for the better? Or was this expensive Disney World meal not worth the price? Find out today here on DFB Guide. Hey everybody, it's AJ for Disney Food Blog. Today we're visiting one of Disney World's fanciest restaurants, so you better break out the good sparkling grape juice for this video. California Grill has been part of Disney's contemporary resort since 1995, and since its opening, it's experienced several menu changes just to keep things fresh and keep guests coming back to see what's new. This is one of those restaurants that's like market-inspired, right? Like they're gonna change the menu every night if they need to, to make things a little bit different. Well, at least they used to do that. But at the start of Disney's 50th anniversary celebration, the restaurant received a major menu overhaul, which also included a big change in the way you experience the dining establishment from here on out. Instead of picking out appetizers, entrees, and desserts in an a la carte fashion, it's a prefix menu pricing system now, meaning you pay a set price per person that automatically includes one appetizer, one entree, and one dessert. Now, despite not everyone loving the whole fixed price ordeal, California Grill was still able to serve up quality eats alongside a quality experience. But since Disney's 50th anniversary wrapped up on March 31st, Cali Grill retired their 50th anniversary specialty items and introduced new and returning, which we're very excited about, three course selections on April 1st. This menu features contemporary market-inspired cuisine that we decided to try out for ourselves just to see if the quality of these new items still meets California Grill's high bar that it set for itself. Now note, this is still a prefix meal, but you get to choose from um, a list of appetizers, a list of entrees, and a list of desserts, but you're still paying the same price. So if, for example, don't want dessert, you're still kind of paying for dessert. Now, before we get into the taste test portion of this video, let's talk about what California Grill actually is. Cali Grill is a signature restaurant, which is Disney's terminology for fancy schmancy. At Contemporary Resort, which good news is only a stone's throw away from the Magic Kingdom, meaning you can get over here super easy from the park just by hopping onto the monorail or walking over, California Grill has previously been recognized by the Michelin Guide for its food, service, and overall atmosphere, so you know they ain't messing around with its reputation here. Oh, and by the way, if you like wine bar joy, George over there in Disney Springs, George Mayotte's was the original sommelier here at California Grill, and he fully managed that restaurant. Now, you'll be able to find it at the tippity top of the Contemporary Resort up on the 15th floor. The only way you're going to be able to reach California Grill is by taking a private elevator up to the top. After you check into your reservation on the second floor, a cast member will escort you to that exclusive 15th story elevator, and then you're heading up to the top. In order to guarantee a table at this bougie establishment, you're going to need to make an advanced dining reservation. Advanced dining reservations open up for Disney's restaurants 60 days before your visit. And though they're supposed to drop at 6 a.m. Eastern each day, they often go live a little bit earlier than that, sometimes 5.30 or 5.45. Best be getting that espresso ready because you're going to need it. For the most part, if you're diligent about getting a reservation for California Grill and don't wait to book a reservation for it at the last possible second, then you should be able to book your nice dinner here without any major issues. However, if you go to make a reservation and find all the tables have already been booked up solid for one night you were planning on dining here, don't lose hope. Cancellations can be made up to two hours before your reservation window without any $10 per person cancellation fees that you'll have to worry about. Sometimes you might find a bright and shining last minute table that pops on the dining tip board via your My Disney Experience app, thanks to a group who might have decided that they don't actually want to drop a whole bunch of cash on a fancy meal today. And if everyone in your group is 21 and over, you may be able to swing by California Grill and grab first come first serve seating at the bar. The bar only features limited bites, but it still gives you the opportunity to order from a full drink menu and take advantage of the restaurant's private balcony. But we'll talk more about that in just a second. So how fancy are we talking about here? Is California Grill more chill but classy, like you'll find the vibes at Steakhouse 71 on the first floor of the Contemporary? Or is it like extremely posh and bougie like you're going to find at Victoria and Albert's over at Disney's Grand Floridian Resort and Spa? Honestly, it's right there in the middle of the two. Nope, you're not going to be noshing on 10 different courses specifically designed to your personal preferences, but you're also not going to be able to wear a bathing suit with your gibbets covered sparkly light up crocs here probably either. I know, it's probably been done. Instead, you'll dine on three courses and be required to follow a dress code that Disney labels as clean, neat, and in good condition. It's like that original Mickey Mouse neat and spiffy, right? Now the ambiance of California Grill matches the rest of the hotel with that sleek and modern feel, but very little Disney flair. Chef Mickey himself stays down on the fourth floor. 
Though there may not be much Disney theming inside this restaurant, it's certainly not that far away. All you have to do is take a peek out the massive windows to see those breathtaking views of Magic Kingdom, Seven Seas Lagoon, and the other monorail resorts. And I have literally stared out the window through entire meals here before. It's beautiful, especially when the sun is setting. Inside California Grill, you're gonna find an onstage kitchen that allows you to get a glimpse of the chefs whipping up your meal in real time. But note that not every table will have a clear view of this kitchen area. It never hurts to request an open kitchen view when you check in with the host upstairs, but keep in mind that cast members won't always be able to fulfill your requests. Though I will say, if you're wanting an open kitchen view, you're probably one of the only ones because everybody else, they want to sit at those window tables because they want to see the fireworks. Speaking of, here's the creme de la creme of the Cali Grill atmosphere. Let's talk about that balcony. Because this restaurant is 15 stories up and because it gives you great views of the Magic Kingdom and because you can only book a meal here for dinner time, all of these conditions create the perfect recipe for a prime view of Cinderella Castle's nighttime fireworks display. When it's showtime, Happily Ever After's music is piped into the restaurant and the lights are dimmed for the ultimate immersive experience. Meaning you get all the perks of the fireworks without having to stand on Main Street USA shoulder to shoulder with other guests. Though you're more than welcome to watch the show from your table if you've got a great view of things from where you've been seated, all California Grill guests are allowed to watch the show from the restaurant's protruding outdoor balcony instead for a potentially clearer and closer view. Keep in mind that you won't be able to see the light projections on Cinderella Castle or Main Street USA from all the way up here, but the fireworks are still going to be crystal clear. If you're hoping to catch this show during your meal, make your advanced dining reservation for about one hour ahead of the fireworks. Keep in mind that the fireworks usually start around 9 p.m. However, if you'd rather eat this hearty meal earlier in the evening, like I said, sunset is a wonderful time. That doesn't mean you won't still get the chance to watch the fireworks. This is an excellent tip that you definitely need to know if you're considering Cali Grill. Just save your receipt from any time you ate your meal and show it to the California Grill cast members on the second floor to let them know that you're coming back to see the show. They'll be more than happy to let you return to that private elevator and go up to see Happily Ever After from that whole new vantage point. Now, just to clarify, you do need to have eaten there that night <laughs> or be eating there soon, I guess, or have a reservation there or something. You can't like bring your receipt back from the previous night or like a year ago. Does it make sense? Okay. Now we could talk all night about fireworks and onstage kitchens and sushi kitchens, etc. but none of that is new to California Grill. I've gathered you all here today to discuss what is new and that's several of the food items here. Your dinner will be made up of three courses where you're gonna pay a set price to choose one appetizer, one entree, and one dessert. But before any of that, there is a complimentary bread service that takes place here much like the restaurants always had. The bread is a sourdough with the sour being mild and the dough being soft and pillowy. Despite the inside being all nice and plush, the outside has that satisfying crackly crust. You're also served some extra accompaniments on the side like a smooth and salty butter as well as olive oil and green onion, tomato and garlic, which just tastes nice and earthy and works well with the flavors of the sourdough. All in all, I'm never going to complain about free bread, but since this is exceptionally good free bread, I'm not going to complain even less. To start off our meal, we ordered the new plant-based strawberry and raspberry salad made with Marcona almond cocoa soil. I don't understand why they say things like that in these fancy restaurants. Don't call it soil. I don't want to think about eating dirt. Anyway, I digress. There's strawberry variations in here, shaved radish, and whipped raspberry vinaigrette, as well as the returning fan favorite, the Sonoma Goat Cheese Ravioli. One of my favorite dishes in all of Walt Disney World. It has been here since the very beginning of California Grill's existence, and it has only been gone for these months during the 50th anniversary when Cali Grill has had this prefix menu. I think one of the cast members actually told us that it takes a lot of effort to make and that they weren't able to kind of manage that process during that time. I don't know why. That's what we were told. But anyway, the goat cheese ravioli, or at least a version of it, is back. This is a little bit different than what you've had here before. There's a little less broth. You see this stripey situation going on with that pasta dough. And you've got those dried mushrooms on top. It's still really good. Anyway, we'll talk about that in just a second. We'll go back to the strawberry and raspberry salad. The whipped vinaigrette on this was really light on the vinegar flavor, relied more on the sweeter notes, which is what I personally prefer with these types of fruit heavy salads. Our reporters called it a dessert salad, thanks to the chocolatey soil ugh, sprinkled on top alongside fresh raspberries and dried strawberries. Now we've pretty much deemed this one a winner and also one of our new favorite Disney World salads to date. 
And the ravioli. So just a heads up, this is made with basil saffron pasta, tomato broth, mushroom ragu, and fennel. And it still tastes delicious. Creamy, cheese packed, and served al dente. Now, I'm not a huge goat cheese fan. In fact, I will actively avoid goat cheese. But this, for some reason, I love it. I can't explain why. I couldn't tell you. Maybe it's the same gene that makes me say I hate mayonnaise, but I love an aioli. I don't get it. Literally the same thing, just an extra little flavor in there. I don't know. Anyway. Anyway, this is amazing. But the one thing that's a little bizarre about this appetizer is that you only get one ravioli. Now, it's not a full-on entree, but it's just interesting that you get to try one and then you're done. But it's pretty big, and what I've done in the past, if I want to split it with a friend or a dining companion, is ask for it to come out just literally cut down the middle and served in two bowls instead. Again, if your server's busy or harried, don't ask for it. Just do it yourself at the table. <laughs> for our main entrees, we tried out the plant-based saffron risotto with harissa honey nut squash and spiced hummus shirmula, as well as the fire-roasted venison with hasselback potatoes, leek soubi, artichoke baragool and ramp pesto now these are a lot of words that I don't understand the risotto was very flavorful but the squash tasted pretty basic nothing wrong with that but the harissa honey nut flavors really didn't charge through as much as we would have liked that being said the risotto is still an incredibly unique and hearty dish and it also features random hints of cilantro which we weren't expecting and our reporters enjoyed that but if you have that one gene type like I do that makes cilantro taste horrible then don't order this one the venison however was probably the winner of the two entrees the meat was super tender, packed with flavor, and had sauces that balanced out the dish really well. The Hasselback potatoes weren't anything to write home about, surprisingly, but the pearl onions added a nice sweetness to all those savory flavors going on here. And the artichoke added something acidic to all of it, just like a lemon or pickle on the side would have. And then we wrapped everything up with a peanut and banana torte made with shortbread, peanut ganache, miso caramel, nut crumble, and caramelized bananas, and a Meyer lemon chiffon cake with chevre whip, which of course is goat cheese, meringue, blueberry foam, ugh, foam, why, and blueberry gel for dessert. The peanut and banana torte has actually been carried over from the 50th anniversary tasting menu, but we were glad to see it sticking around because it's one of our favorite plant-based desserts on property. The sweet and savory combination, the soft ganache against the nutty crumbles, and the caramelized bananas alongside fresh blackberries made each bite very interesting in the best possible way. Kind of like a fancy candy bar, minus any chocolate coatings. Regardless of whether you're a strictly plant-based eater or not, if you just enjoy desserts, period, this is a good option to consider. But as as far as the lemon cake is concerned, we'd probably pass on this one next time. Not to say it wasn't a high quality cake or anything, but it just tastes like really good wedding cake, so there aren't really any standout flavor profiles going on here. If you like wedding cake, then disregard. But if you want something that's a bit more unique, I'd choose that peanut and banana tort or something else on the next visit. Now, let's talk about the damage, right? Regardless of what you order on California Girls Prefix menu, expect to pay $89 per adult and $39 per kid. I'll give you a second to let the sticker shock sink in. Okay, now, this is by far and away one of the most expensive meals you're gonna find on Disney property. Even storybook dining at Artist Point with Snow White over in Disney's Wilderness Lodge costs less than California Grill at $65 per adult, and still provides you a three-course meal where you can even ask for seconds or thirds of certain items. Not to mention you get to meet Snow White, Grumpy Dopey, and the Evil Queen here too. But then again, you're paying for a different dining experience at California Grill. The food is high quality, the fireworks views are killer, and the ambiance is classy, but not in an overly stuffy way. That being said, if you visited Cali Grill before everything switched over to a prefix price, this $89 price tag might leave a sour taste in your mouth. Before, if you didn't want to order an appetizer or dessert, you didn't have to. But now you don't have the option to pay for only one thing and call it good. 89 bucks is your base price. You can also enhance your meal with specialty drink options, both alcoholic and non-alcoholic. Or you can go all out with a three-course signature wine pairing for $39 extra per guest, or a deluxe wine pairing for $69 extra per guest. So you can always go up from 89, but you're not able to go down. If you're looking for a nice dinner with a la carte pricing still available, Steakhouse 71 on the first floor of the resort is a decent alternative to turn toward. In fact, they have some of the more affordable steakhouse cuts on property without having to sacrifice the quality of the meat to make it happen. Grand Floridian Cafe over at Disney's Grand Floridian Resort is only a monorail ride away from the contemporary and provides a la carte options like the lobster Thermidor burger, eggs Benedict, and buttermilk fried chicken, 
and a relaxing, charming atmosphere. And if you're craving some seafood, I always love a good meal over at the Boathouse in Disney Springs, because while there are certainly opportunities to splurge on dishes like Maine Lobster Tail Oscar or one of the Gibson's Heritage Steaks, this spot also offers a more casual outdoor menu with sandwiches and burgers that can help keep costs reasonable while still enjoying that yacht-like atmosphere. There are several restaurants in Disney World with a la carte menus and classy vibes that you can choose from instead of California Grill if you so desire. So if you want to learn about even more of them, you can head over to dfbstore.com after this and nab the 2023 DFB Guide to Walt Disney World Dining, which is a comprehensive hundreds of pages guidebook outlining every single detail you could ever want to know about eating in Disney World. And don't forget to use code YouTube for a discount on your digital guide purchase. So Cali Grill, is she worth it? Well, out of all the Disney World restaurants out there, California Grill might be the good option for you if you want a classy meal. California Grill usually delivers. Now, I have had good and bad experiences here in the past, but those would encompass service and experience. The food, when it's quote unquote bad, is not actually bad. It's just not what I had expected and not what I really wanted to pay that amount of money for, if that makes sense. So I've never had like a bad food experience. It's just been like, ah, was it really worth it, right? So that's what I would say about a classy meal. It's definitely a classy atmosphere and experience there, and the food will usually be good, if not always great. This can also be a great option if you wanna watch those fireworks without a thousand other people breathing down your neck. That private balcony viewing of Magic Kingdom at night might be worth the price alone. Seeing the fireworks from way up on the 15th floor of Contemporary Resort is pretty spectacular. That being said, if it's your first time ever watching Happily Ever After, I'd still recommend watching it on Main Street USA instead for the full fireworks projection effects and just chills up and down your spine. Now, you're celebrating a special occasion? That might be another reason that you want to choose California Grill. A nice meal, a spick and span atmosphere, a gorgeous view of Magic Kingdom, maybe a glass of wine or two. California Grill definitely checks off all the boxes for a romantic night out or a night of merriment for some big milestone. Just make sure that if you are planning on booking a table here for a special occasion, you do so 60 days in advance when reservations first open up. Now for the cons. You're going to want to stick to the ground level if you don't want to pay 89 bucks for a lot of food late at night. Yep, this is forever and always going to be the big kicker. Cali Grill has never been cheap by any means, but after the 50th anniversary menu changed things from a la carte pricing to prefix pricing and the new menu that appeared on April 1st continued to follow suit, you're still going to have to pay for quite a lot of food, even if you don't want to eat all of it. But again, the quality is good and the atmosphere is lovely, so perhaps this could be a one and done experience for you if you have room in your vacation budget to factor in at least one signature restaurant. Now, this may not be an option for you if you're super afraid of heights. If you are, you may not be able to fully appreciate those scaling window views and outdoor balcony. Sure, you might be able to ask to sit further away from the windows, but a big part of what makes that impressive price tag a bit more worth it is the private balcony viewing. So if you're not planning on using said view to your advantage, Advantage, but you still want to see the fireworks alongside your meal, you might be better off dining at a restaurant like the newly reopened Narcoosie's over at Disney's Grand Floridian, where you might be able to catch the fireworks from its waterfront wraparound patio and panoramic windows, while also dining in an upscale yet casual seafood restaurant. And maybe you're worried about your mini-me's. Your kids won't be impressed. Kids are allowed to eat here, absolutely. They'll even get to choose their own appetizers, entrees, and desserts for that prefix $39 price. But are they gonna be as thrilled by Cali Grill as they would be by Chef Mickey's, where the theming is bright and colorful, the characters are out and about meeting and greeting, and the buffet is chock full of mac and cheese? Well, probably not. Sure, they'll love seeing those fireworks, but other than that, this signature restaurant might otherwise be like a total boredom snooze fest for them. So overall, Cali Grill is a Disney World restaurant that I thoroughly enjoy. It's got a sophisticated atmosphere, unique and fresh menu selections, and fireworks views that you'll probably be dreaming about for weeks after. If it weren't for the price, I'd say, great, give it a go. But the 89 bucks keeps me from fully recommending this meal across the board, because that's a lot of money for a lot of food that you might not want all of. So you really have to decide if 89 bucks is gonna be worth it when it comes to the group you're traveling with, or if you're much better off picking someplace cheaper that you might actually prefer in the end. So what do you think? Is California Grill on your list of must-try restaurants, or is the price and style of cuisine still not your vibe, even after the new menu add let us know in the comments and keep checking back here for more DFB reviews really, really soon. Thanks for listening, everyone, and thanks for watching.
As always, this is AJ for Disney Food Blog, and we'll see you real soon.